Hiya, folks. This is Bill Stern with another thrilling story from the world of sports. The Bible of all sports writers and fans is Frank Mankey's record book, most authoritative work of its kind ever published. It lists history and records of every sport you can think of. Let's turn to billiards and the year 1896, where we find eight-year-old Willie Hoppy launching his amazing career. 1900, the year the American Baseball League was formed, found Willie touring America as the boy wonder of billiards. At 16, Willie gained international attention, winning the world's young master's crown in competition with junior champs from every billiard-playing country in Europe. Two years later, he defeated Maurice Pino of France for the world's bulk line title. These were the days when Teddy Roosevelt was the president of the United States. From 1910 to 20, Hoppy was supreme at bulk line. He played tournaments and exhibitions in every part of the world, and no competitor could even come close. That is, until Willie came up against the great Jake Schaefer, Jr. Both became so expert that they practically killed off all competition and the game. In 26, Bob Canifax, world's three-cushion champ, challenged Hoppy to a match. Although this was Willie's first three-cushion tourney, he ran away from Canifax. For more than half a century, Willie Hoppy has been a champion. His career spanned the years since William McKinley's administration. Today at 63, Hoppy is still winning titles and trophies, the granddaddy and grandest of all champions. Here in the world-renowned New York Athletic Club, Willie Hoppy displays the cue wizardry that was celebrated when John L. Sullivan was still heavyweight boxing champion of the world, before the forward pass was legalized in football, before baseball had ever heard of Ty Cobb. In every poll to select the outstanding sports figures of the first half of this century, Hoppy rates with all the greats, because in every year of the 20th century, he's held one or more billiard titles, and he goes right on winning them. At this point, he's playing an exhibition match with New York AC and National Club champion Edward Lee. But Ed isn't getting much of a chance to do much more than look on, for Willie's running in rare form, and there goes match point, made by Father Time's favorite son. Congratulations from the amateur champ to the old pro. Ed Lee is a good player, but no match for Hoppy. Now let's take a lesson in cuemanship, starting with the bridge. Forefinger grips the cue firmly. Don't make the mistake of letting it slide too easily, like this. With a proper bridge, you should be able to see the flesh of your grip finger as the cue moves through. Grip the butt lightly without wrapping the hand around it. The stroke should be regular and rhythmic. The swing coming from the shoulder, not from the elbow. Don't chop your stroke or poke the ball. Here's how an even stroke with a follow through. Okay, now we go to the English class. To make your cue ball spin right, hit it off center to the right. To make it spin left, hit it left. To draw the ball back, stroke the cue ball low. For a straight follow through, stroke it high. That's about all there is to it, uh, except a few years of practice. In billiards, the cue ball must hit or kiss the other two balls. In three cushion, the cue ball must hit three or more cushions before the second ball is kissed. Hoppy, using right-hand English, goes around the three cushions with the cue ball first and then makes the billiard. Now here's the same setup, but Hoppy's gonna make it a different way. The cue ball with left-hand English on it hits the white ball first, then around the table hitting five cushions, coming out of the corner to kiss the red ball. That's precision shooting. Same setup, different technique, this time with follow English. The cue ball taking three cushions before kissing the red. Wait a second, folks, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here goes a nine cushion shot. While you're counting them, I'll tell you that many good billiard players can't even make the cue ball go that far. This takes real cue genius. Well, you bet he doesn't make it. There it is, billiard. How do you like that, folks? An exhibition shot not legal in competition. A time shot that shows Hoppy's complete mastery of the angles, control of the balls, and accuracy in his judgment of the speed at which they're rolling. A demonstration of split-second timing combined with perfect coordination between eye, mind, and muscle. 
How does he ever keep those balls out of a traffic jam? And he makes a billiard. Willie puts more English on this than a college prexy. Hitting the red, bypassing the white, drawing off the end, bumping the side rail twice, and making the billiard. That was called a force shot. Here comes a force draw shot. The trick of this one is to keep the red ball out of the way while the cue ball takes the English and makes the billiard. Look at that cue ball hook and come back with a reverse English. A terrific shot that few but the old maestro can even try to make. One of the most amazing control shots you'll ever see coming up. A three cushion force follow. Look at that cue ball take the stuff. It seems to be barely rolling. Looks like it won't make it. Come on there cue ball, we're betting on you. Watch it pick up speed as it comes off the cushion. There's plenty of stuff on that one. Practically stymied, but he draws it off the white into the cushion. It takes the English, draws back into the corner, hitting three rails, bouncing off the fourth rail, and completing the billiard. And believe it or not, it really happened. These folks saw it with their own eyes. This time, Willie's in trouble, and he takes the only way out. A masse shot off the red ball and taking it out of the way. Now, the cue ball takes the English and the long way around the table. Four cushions for a once-in-a-lifetime shot. Another exhibition shot. See if you can count the cushions, and I'll tell you in advance that the number's eight. Perfect timing, and that's why it's called a time shot. Now, here's an easier one to count, but twice as hard to do. A masse shot. And if you count the cue ball hitting the rails four times, you're correct, and probably as amazed as I am. Willie Hoppy sure has that cue ball educated in the English department. Look at the thing take the stuff and the bend. The figure eight off the rail and back for the billiard. He's no professor of billiards, he's a professor of English. Here comes another lesson in senior English. A follow shot off the white ball and the cue ball never gets out of the corner. Four cushions in the corner, and he doesn't do it with mirrors or magnets. This one's a gag shot, and you'd get shot for trying it in a match with your best friend. He cues it again with just enough stuff to make the billiard. An obstacle course. 25 duck pins, and they're all over the table. Hoppy has to know all the angles to shoot through them, hit five cushions, and end up with a billiard. This is how I generally roll duck pins. Miss every doggone one. They're set up for bowling, and the object is to curve the cue ball around them and make the billiard. What baseball could do with a pitcher could curve them like that. If he can get around all of these without knocking one down, he's a Houdini. The ball goes through him like a Sunday driver going to the picnic grounds. You wouldn't have believed it if you hadn't seen it yourself. Performed by the wizard of the queue, the king of the cushions, Willie Hoppy, old daddy time's favorite champion.